Today in the episode, we are going to attend the World Wrestling Championship on three categories, which our capital is hosting for the first time. We will talk with two-time champion of Asian Para Games, Yajan Selim Gareev. And then there is a masterclass from a Bujin Khan trainer. We have been waiting for this event for a long time and finally it happened. The capital of Kazakhstan for the first time hosts the World Wrestling Championship on Women's Freestyle, Men's Freestyle and Greco-Roman. We have these badges with extended access. Let's start! These days, the Baris Arena is divided into several functional zones. For instance, the rolling ring turned into a warm-up hall. The best wrestlers from countries all over the world warm up here before going onto the carpet. Some of them choose to watch a broadcast of their competitors' fight, which is also useful. Dozens of wrestlers went out to warm up on mats. Despite the fact that participants came from all over the world, we could hear the Russian language very often. Many teams use services of legionnaires and some of them are representatives of the CIS countries. And here we are talking not only about wrestlers, but also coaches. The organization is indeed fantastic, great respect. In general, what chances does the Swiss team have? The preparation was great. Speaking of chances, well, small country and small chances. But we'll still fight. As far as I know, you came from the CIS. Do you have anyone to work with? Yes, there are many talented guys. Someone needs a year, while someone needs 10 years. We are working on it right now. The Russian team, which is in the list of main favorites, came to Kazakhstan as well. They have several world champions in each type of wrestling. Looking ahead, we could say that they justified their status. The main task is to earn license for the Olympic Games. Of course, everyone will strive to win medals of the highest standard. Team superiority is equally important. Do you like the tournament organization? Everything is wonderful so far, I do not have any complaints. Only the positive ones. Now speaking on tournament among the Greco-Roman wrestlers. Unfortunately, Kazakhstan could not take golden medals but was very close to this. At once, two wrestlers performed in the finals. Kolan Jakansha and Nokoja Kaipanov. However, even a full arena could not help in the final decisive battle. Meyrambek Ainagulov and Almat Kabispaev won the bronze medals. We took an interview from one of the ex-Kazakhstani sportsmen, Marat Garipov. I learned Portuguese and it gave me a key to the whole thing. Now I understand Spanish, Italian and French well. Moreover, I travel easily throughout Europe and Latin America. Let us explain to our viewers that the competition in Kazakhstan was very high at that period of time. Thus, to get to the World Championship as a member of our team was really difficult. There is always some kind of competition. We have wrestling as the number one sport, literally like football in Brazil. Kazakhstan has been participating in the World Wrestling Championship since 1993. During these 26 years, the country has not been able to win a gold medal in men's and women's freestyle wrestling at the World Championships and Olympic Games. In total, a little more than 1,000 athletes came to this World Championship. The capital of Kazakhstan received delegations from 103 countries, including coaches, athletes, doctors, masseurs and many other team members. Fans could not miss such event as well, 15,000 tickets were sold even before the start of tournament. Overall, more than 50,000 people attended this World Championship. My brother-in-law is a wrestler and he fights for Greg Roman, 72 kilograms. 
What about his chances? Uh, actually, he already lost this uh, today, but uh, he has a chance for repercharge tomorrow. These trucks, stuffed with television equipment, provide the broadcast of World Championship to 104 countries. Distribution rights were bought by Iran, Russia, Japan and Finland. Generally, the interest for World Championship is quite high. 60 Olympic champions of different ages, including active athletes that arrived here. World wrestling stars, world and Olympic champions appeared on the carpet every day. For fans, it was a real festival. Meanwhile, in the warm-up hall, the wrestlers tried to concentrate and some of them even drank special tea. And your wrestlers drink tea? <laughs> yeah. Just right now. Yeah, this is a secret? Tea. A secret? Yeah. Special tea. For wrestlers, this is the first qualifying event before the Olympic Games in Tokyo. In general, No Sultan provided 108 licenses for three types of wrestling. In competitions, among freestyle wrestlers, silver was brought to Kazakhstan by Daulet Niyazbekov and Nokoja Kaipanov, as well as bronze medals by Nurislam Sanayev. In record history, Kazakhstani freestyle wrestlers reached and performed at finals of the Olympic Games and World Championships six times. In all these six final fights, the Kazakhstanis were not able to defeat Russian athletes. In women's wrestling, Kazakhstan has only one medal. This bronze was won by Valentina Islamova. The next major start for wrestlers is the Olympic Games, and the World Championship will be held in Norway in 2021. As for the tournament in Kazakhstan, it was successful both for athletes as well as for organizers. Further in our episode, we have a big interview with Yezhan Selimgereyev on sports goals and the development of Paralympic movement in Kazakhstan. At the age of nine, he was left without arm and leg due to an accident. Doctors said that he survived thanks to a miracle. Years later, Yezhan Selimgereyev found his vocation in sports. Today, he is one of the best Paralympic swimmers in the world and one of the Kazakhstan's main hopes for a medal at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Yezhan, hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. What is your main sport goal now? The dream of all athletes is to become an Olympic champion. Now it is my dream as well. I will prepare for the Games in Tokyo and believe I can win. Hence, I set aside all thoughts on starting family, focusing only on athletes' way for now. Many people ask me why I did not make time my personal life. So now I can give an answer to everyone. Sport of high achievements, especially in my case, requires sacrifice. I myself create my future and hope that everything comes to me over time. You have been in sports not so long ago, and you might not have become a professional athlete if not for the accident. Well, I dreamed of becoming a football player since my childhood. I believed that I could become a player in such teams as Real Madrid or Barcelona. After that incident, I could not let myself to give up. I started swimming and training. My relatives and friends gave me the tremendous support. This in its turn gave me the inner strength to believe that I can do it, that life has not ended yet.
Initially, there were some problems with psychology and motivation. How did you come to the point that you should achieve something more? Well, I was really shy of people when I came to the swimming section. I put on a t-shirt because I did not have the arm and the leg. So I did not want to injure their psyche. After all, most people are quite susceptible. Sitting in a changing room, I thought for whom my swimming is important for me or other people. At that period of time, I have already worked in the field of youth policy for about a year in Atarao. Every day I went swimming after I finished my work at 5 p.m. Actually, I often left the house at 8 a.m. in the morning and arrived there at 10 a.m. in the evening. Did you have problems with your studies? Did you leave your school after that accident? What happened after? I have been in the hospital for a long time after that incident. Then there was a recovery process when I learned to walk again. It took a lot of time to recover, and consequently my study has left aside. Later, we decided to study at home. But knowing that school is completely different as there are communication, your peers, laughter. It became uninteresting for me to study at home. Then I told my tutor not to come to my home as I did not want to study, that's all. But she still came and sometimes I had to run away from her. She still came every day and I'm really grateful to her for this. I returned to school in the 10th grade. I went to my father's homeland where the director of a local school called me. I remember I was very happy. The adult life has begun, but I had to be patient as people continued to point at me saying that I was handicapped. Did you make some attempts? Have you succeeded from the first time? I have had many attempts. I did not even tell my parents that I was going to do sports. I did everything quietly. I have tried not to tell anything to anyone. I asked only in the case if I needed something, but often I make decisions on what should I do by my own. What were your biggest dreams at that time? I had a dream to be useful to society for at least 1% of my capabilities. On the second year of university, my teacher, Renat Maratovich, recommended me to go to swimming. I grew up on the shores of the Ural, so swimming for me is something native. After graduation, I had several calls from different companies, but I was really excited when I was invited to the Youth Association. I thought that I can realize my full potential here. And money was not the most important thing here. I did not even think about it. The most important thing for me was the result of my work. 
If you are the best in your field, then I guess money will come over time. I received 25,000 per month. My friends, full-fledged guys with two hands and two legs have been just lying at home, waiting for invitations from large companies with a salary of 200-300,000 tenge. Is it hard for people with disabilities to study in Kazakhstan? And what would you change? People who have become disabled for various reasons should be a part of society. Schools should accept them. If he is at home all day, he will always be depressed. From the point of view of psychology, he starts to feel himself useless like no one needs him. I believe it should not be so as such people are parts of our society. You need to treat them as equals. This is the main support. What advice would you give to people who have problems with motivation? To be honest, I do not understand such people. I think a person should always strive to move forward. This is a real life. It is fleeting and there should be no excuses such as then and and if. You always need to look with positivity at whatever happens in your life. I'm only five years in sports and during this whole period I lost only in 2014. Since then there have been no defeats. Is the hard work or good luck or altogether key to this? I still remember snowstorm, frost, it doesn't matter. I never allowed myself to skip training. I think this is a character. I set myself a goal and that's all. You cannot get out of this way. A man never knows how great his potential is, he will never know if he will sit on one's hands. The laziness actually destroys much in this life. Yajan, do you also sing? Yes, I do. There is one story I want to share with you. It all started during my school years, in the ninth or tenth grade. I liked one girl, but once I offended her. I did not know how to apologize and was really shy on idea to go to her school. I could not go home either. Then I decided to apologize to her by singing. I wrote a song, adding a good melody on it with the help of professional musicians. After I realized that I had to carry it on radio, I came to the regional station. They said that administration would check the song and if they like it, it will be on air. I had been waiting for this every day. It was finally aired on radio on the third day and all my friends started calling me. Then this song had been played for about 15 to 20 times a day. After I wrote my third song, Akilbek Jemene, his producers, if to be precise, called me. They invited me to sing at his concert. So that is how I had a great chance to perform on the big stage. Are there conditions for Paralympians practicing? We do not have such problems in Atara region. Yezhan, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. Big victories to you. Further in the episode, we will tell you what the Bujin Khan is.
the ninth Dan Master Valery Akulov will help us in this. The Bujinkan school embodies traditions of thousand-year history of the Japanese shadow warriors art. The ninjas that so many films were short about actually existed. They received about the same training. We teach a traditional archery, all kinds of budos, Japanese martial arts with a sword, spear, pole. Generally, there are nine types of armaments. We do not put an emphasis on one thing. I can train one of the techniques and at the same time show how it works with the sword. As the Japanese say, all movements of hand-to-hand -hand combat came from the sword. There are so many fighting techniques in the ninja's armory, striking, wrestling and defensive. Moreover, each person can independently choose for himself what suits him best. Along with the traditional swords and short stick knives, a warrior should be able to use the most common everyday items for combat purposes. A pen, house keys and even a piece of paper. There we have arrows. They used to be made of bamboo or wood in the past. So in ancient times it looked like this. That is, it is also fukuyu. The modern version and version used from a bamboo straw. The weapons were disguised as a flute. Around 30 people train nowadays in the Capitals Club. This is the main headquarters of the Bujin Khan in our country. Besides No Sultan, there is also a section in Amati. You can study Bujin Khan from the age of three. People are calling, then they are coming. However, everyone needs a competition. Most of them do not understand. They ask me to teach them how to hit the darts. Why? And for what? When I ask this question, they answer so that they can fight on the street. Why do you want to fight on the street? As in many other martial arts that came to us from Japan, there is a gradation of training degrees in Bujinkan. Everyone starts with a white belt and the highest stage of development is a black belt. The lack of sparring and competition is compensated by workshops. Moreover, they are the most diverse as they can take place in nature, where students practice skills of disguise and overcome obstacles. We make immediate obstacles as log or rope climbing, overcoming territories where they use climbing skills. We have summer camps as well. We travel outside the city where we use the skills that we work out here. By tradition, Video of the Week section is completing our today's episode. In the capital, there were cycling competitions among preschool children. This tournament was held for the third time and brought together about 300 participants. These young athletes competed in the 100-meter race. Particularly outstanding cyclists were invited to attend the Olympic Training Center. <laughs>